Insta360 GO free is here and I'm doing a full breakdown of the announcement. We'll go over all the specs and differences between GO3 and GO2, discuss the design of GO3, highlight trade-offs and make the final judgment on whether the GO3 is a GO or a no-GO. Let's start with design. This is the most immediate difference you notice about GO3. What changed dramatically is the case, or an action pod as Insta360 calls it now. This is squarely aimed at the GoPro and DJI's of the world, though it slightly loses an appeal of the AirPods Pro type pocketable solution. Of course, most people wanted a screen which flips here, and that's what Insta360 delivered. Time will tell. Another minor issue is that Go 2 case was also protecting the device all around, whilst the action pod only really protects the back of the device. And the IP rating of the action pod is not really meant for underwater exercising, although Insta360 conveniently adding diving case in their accessory section. However, ability to properly film yourself may really be what matters to you most. In that case, the action pod is way better. I personally am torn between the convenience and new features. Feel itself has to change much, but an additional LND and some minor changes at the back, it looks the same. Now moving over to the most important part, video capabilities. Go Free features all the modes you've grown used to in Go 2, normal video, time lapse, time shift. It does rename Pro Video to Freeform, which I think is more of a marketing move to showcase ability to reframe post shooting. It also adds loop and pre recording modes. Resolution wise, I think there is some clever marketing going on. Insta360 claims 2.7K, but if you look through the details, you will notice that it will only be available in video loop and pre recording modes. Freeform, which is probably the mode people will use the most, will remain. 2560 by 1440 or 2560 all around if you think about the reframing. This is the major bummer of the announcement as most people were looking forward to 4K. And since all other specs around aperture and things like that are the same, we can only assume that the most improvements will be coming from improved computational videography rather than the camera itself. Battery life. Insta360 claims 45 minutes of battery life for Go 3 standalone, which is a 15 minute improvement over Go 2. Since this is measured in 1080p mode, in standard video mode, I'd expect the camera to run 25 to 30 minutes in freeform, which is still an improvement over the 20 minute mark of Go 2. Switching over to dimensions, you will notice that Go 3 is about a third heavier than Go 2, but we're talking 35 grams, I'm not sure it will be a bad skill for anyone. And obviously the case, now called Action Pod, is much heavier than the Clam Go 2 hat. But again, with Action Pod, the bigger question is its dimensions rather than the weight. Under 100 grams is not that much of an issue. Storage options finally feature 128 gig option, though it is still not replaceable. Oh well, at least you can store a bit more. Audio improvements inbound with second microphone. Since Go 2 had a very good audio quality already, I expect Go 3 to be even sharper. Insta360 also announced a bunch of accessories. In addition to the now classic magnetic pendant and cap clip, we'll be getting pivot stand and quick release mount, fetch stick for your furry friends, dive case and monkey tail mount. Magnets rule the world here and this is great. All of these accessories add endless versatility to your Go 3. Finally the price. 64GB Go 3 will set you back 399, which is about 70 more than the Go 2 used to cost at launch. And considering all the changes with an action pod, I think one can justify the cost increase. However, this puts Go 3 squarely in the domain of GoPro Hero 11 and makes it more expensive than DJI Action 3. Unless you absolutely need the smallest size, it may be a difficult trade-off as those cameras shoot in 4K and for longer. Overall, I think Insta360 announced a real mix back here. On the one hand, innovation with Action Pod, adding new features and options are certainly pushing this device forward. On the other hand, lack of 4K and GoPro Hero 11 level pricing may be a tough pill, pun intended, to swallow. If you do not have Go 2, what the most complex solution, then this is a go. Otherwise, for myself, I'll think about it for a bit before pulling the trigger on buying one especially since I've just bought Go2 about a month ago. And if I do, you can be sure there will be a full review. What do you think? Let me know in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one.